back out at the range northeast Kentucky fishing game today and I've got these uh, aluminum cases that I've been talking about here for a while now and uh, I've been picking these up yeah, pretty much all spring and uh, I decided I was going to do another video on reloading these and I was going to start out with five of these and, and reload them until they failed but I think for expediency sake I'm going to start with <clears throat> uh, and do three of these. Uh, I think it's this is going to take longer than I thought it was going to, especially if I run five. So here's our, our tool that we've got. This is uh, the Lee hand press, and this thing basically works with a standard set of dies. You've got all your same dies that you use in a single stage press. <clears throat> Got your uh, depriming and resizing die, got your flare die, your bullet seating die, and your crimp die, and in uh, your shell holder. So I'm going to start off with, uh, and then there's a couple of other adapters here. So you have this adapter piece that allows you to see the case in the top of this and use this tool here to set your new primers in. And we'll have to do that in a minute. But right now, I want to use the uh, shell holder and put it in down here. I'm going to use the decapping and resizing die. Simply slide these in. And I did adjust these dies before I left the house the other day. The adjustment is just a little bit different than what they are in my single stage press. There's three of them. Take this back out. And those primers are going back down in this hollow shaft here. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to swap this back out again <clears throat> to seat the primers. press is set up to use the, the quick change bushings as well. This is not going to be the most efficient way of loading brass or loading ammunition. But when you consider that I'm literally sitting here at the range making my own bullets.
All right, there's three more. And eyes. So I've actually got a steel plate out here at 75 yards that I'm trying to shoot at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Going for number thirteen. This case does not look any worse for wear. It's 14 loadings, 15 firings counting the factory fire. <clears throat> I mean, this case is still. Good shape. That was fifteen. All right. That was the fail point. So we got a little bit of a split at the neck and a split down the body of the case. All right, so this case right here though, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 loadings. I reloaded that case 16 times right here on camera. Counting the factory firing, that case had 17 firings on it. That is crazy, guys. Crazy. All right, guys. So we lost the first case on the second loading, third firing. That's the first case we lost. 
And then the next case, we lost it on the fifth loading, sixth firing. And like I said, this one went all the way down to 16 loadings, 17 firings before we lost this one. picture of what the failed cases look like. So anyway, there it is, guys. Uh, if you got any questions on this, give me a call. Like I said, I've done this with 357 mag, 10 millimeter, uh, 223 steel cases. I mean, the old myth that you cannot load steel and aluminum cases is just that. It's a myth. Now, the mileage will vary, uh, as we can see here and there's no definite rhyme or reason, but even a brass case can fail on the second or third loading. So, all right, if you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Matt, Kentucky Range Time. We'll catch you guys later.